Hi everyone, welcome to another race analysis video. This is the Cycling SA Super Series Round 4 and we're racing in the town of Munter. Uh, this is the Masters Cat 2 race. Uh, I'm wearing the leader's jersey this week. Um, I managed to win round 1. Uh, I came second in the road race yesterday and unfortunately round 2 the team time trial was cancelled due to the weather. Uh, so at the start of this race my main rivals are Alex from Norwood Red. Uh, he's in the red top wearing number 45. Stephen from Norwood Blue, he's in number 35. And Michael Davies from Rocket Racing, who's in the blue helmet wearing 63. Now they'd finished uh, second, third and fourth in the first crit a couple of weeks ago. And they each got some points yesterday in the road race. And you can see that they're all really close to me at the finish line of that first crit. So, uh, the team's strategy this week was to make it really hard in the first half of the race, and then cover all the attacks that came in the second half. My usual lead-out guy, number 29 up there, uh, he was going to make some early attacks himself, um, and try to keep trying until either something stuck, or he at least burnt up a few of the other team's chases. We also had Thomas, who's directly ahead of me there, Richo and Michael, each covering breaks, uh, and they also took a few turns on the front, uh, keeping the pace high whenever it bunched up. We also had a second goal to get uh, David Millo uh, into the uh, sprint classification. The, the leader of that classification unfortunately crashed out yesterday. Um, he was right up there in the sprint, but unfortunately a uh, touch of wheels set him down. And my plan was to stay in about the top ten for as much as possible, uh, keep out of trouble. trouble. Um, given how strong my team was, I wasn't expecting to have to close anything down myself, but I wanted to be there or thereabouts in case something got up the road. So the Wallaroo road race was yesterday afternoon. That was a 75 kilometer road race with about 17 k's of really rough gravel thrown in for good measure. So there were some really tired legs going into this race and I think that kept the speed down a little bit lower than it might otherwise have been. The course itself uh, isn't particularly technical. Um, it's a pretty standard four corner crit. Um, there was a very slight hill going up towards the back side of the course and then from about this point onwards it's uh, a bit of a downhill into a hard right hand corner. This corner coming up is probably the most tricky. Um, fairly rough road, a bit of gravel on the road. Um, a lot of people were quite nervous going into the corner and certainly there were breaks all the time. Um, I found that the quickest way around the corner was often to take the outside line, um, commit to the corner, turn a bit later um, and you could usually make up a few places on the outside while everyone's touching their brakes. This corner here has got a nice spoon drain in the middle of it, but even so you should be able to pedal all the way through it. Uh, nice wash out towards the end of the corner, um, and then a slight uphill drag towards the finish line. Uh, the course is about 900 metres long. Um, the road surface, other than that uh, corner three, is quite good, um, and there weren't any other technical corners to make it, make it tricky. So at this point, Alistair's already gone up the road for his first attack, um, and that's strung out the bunch who are all chasing him. He's probably got five seconds. Um, but other than this little climb and the sprinting out of the corners here, when it's strung out like this, I'm doing about as, least, as little work as I do in the entire race. Um, when it's nice and strung out, uh, it's easy to stay in the wheels, it's easy to stay smooth. I mean, I've dropped down to 100 watts, and I'm just rolling along down the downhill. Um, and this, this suits me perfectly. Um, every time there is an attack, particularly from one of my teammates, the race strings out and I get a free ride towards the finish. Um, where I've had the most trouble is when the pace slowed down and I had to start fighting for position. Um, and fortunately that's when my team usually went to the front and strung it out. Alistair's still about five seconds ahead of the bunch. Um, at the very start of the race, KD, who was racing on his own, um, he's just up to my left now. Uh, he went for an early attack. Um, uh, and we've got Michael who's gone for a few attacks as well in the the black helmet. Um, and that's pretty much how the race went on for the first few minutes. So Alistair had been brought back. Someone else had gone. Um, ADX did some chasing. Uh, Michael went on an attack. Uh, KD went on an attack. Um, and all of this kept the pace reasonably well strung out up to this point. Uh, they're just blowing the whistle for the first preem lap. Um, I wasn't going for this competition. Um, Michael, uh, not Michael, Millo was um, 
was coming in to have a shot at this. Uh, gaps opened up just ahead. This was a bit lucky. Um, Rocket Racing, this is Michael Davies, who's um, leading the over 50s category. He does most of the closing here for me. Um, at this point, I was a bit worried that a gap with a big group had gone up the road, and I was going to punch to try to catch it, but uh, I realised they'd set up and were just coasting down the road. Uh, so I just set up two and just rolled onto the back of them. And going into this corner, I took a wider line. I'm not particularly interested in moving up at this point, but I don't want to have to touch the brakes. Everyone else is rolling around the outside, doing almost no, no effort, and then slotting straight back in. Um, and then I do exactly the same thing here. Uh, so the pre laps coming up. Um, Alistair is just ahead on the left. A uh, few people open up the sprint. Uh, unfortunately, it all sticks together at this point and Miller gets first across the line for three points in the sprint category. So we're a few laps later on. Um, things have been pretty fast. There's been a few attacks here and there. Uh, and at this point, Darren Hicks is going for a solo attack off the front uh, about halfway through the race. Um, and once again, my team goes straight to the front and just starts raising the pace and slowly bringing it back. Um, and this happens uh, again and again throughout the race. You can see Alistair has gone to the front. Uh, Richard, who's just been passed on the right, is coming back. He's been keeping the pace reasonably high. Uh, and Alistair sets up the chase. So Darren's been brought back, uh, and shortly after that another attack went, and um, 30 seconds later there goes Michael getting straight onto the front to chase down the next attack. Although you can see he's going quite hard, so I'm not sure if he's trying to bring the field back together or join the break himself, but either way suits us fine, because if we've got a man up in the break then everyone else has to chase, that strings the field out, um, and that makes it really easy for me. So as you can see, Michael's got a bit of a gap, he's about halfway across, um, and that brings Norwood and Sion uh, and ASG to the front, and now they've got to close that down as well, and 46 has just gone to the front to try to bring that back. He also did quite a bit of work in bringing Darren back just before, um, and all of this is working really well for me, because I'm just sitting in the wheels doing as little as possible. So Michael's attack gets caught, he gets reeled in, um, he sits on the front for another probably two laps, but ultimately um, he wears out and has to slow down. Uh, and this is why it's important to keep the pace high. As soon as he does, as soon as the pace comes down at the front, um, I start getting swarmed, and now I'm having to fight for position as people are coming up on both sides of me. Um, I probably make a bit of a mistake here. Um, I should have fought a bit harder to stay on a wheel that was moving forward. Uh, I wasn't too worried. It was, you know, halfway through the race, bit bit more than halfway through the race, um, but obviously still not, not ideal to be drifting backwards too much. And in any event, as we come through the finish line here, we get the whistle for the prem lap, um, and I'm quite a long way out of position. I'm not going for the premes, but um, if the race splits up immediately after the prem, which crits sometimes do, then I'm um, I'm on the wrong side of that. Milo in the blue helmet, he's going for the preems today. Uh, Alistair's in front of him, and believe it or not, Michael's still on the front, trying to keep the pace high. Um, but obviously people are starting to pass on both sides. Milo goes up the front. I could have followed his wheel, but um, I was happy just sitting, uh, sitting in the wheels going around here. Power's going up a little bit, just trying to keep with it. Um, Michael or Alistair gets to the front and tries to pull... Milo a bit further forwards, um, and once again I'm now sort of in the middle of the pack rather than at the front, and um, it, although I'm on a good, fairly good wheel, it's going backwards, not forwards. Pace has kicked up a little bit here, hitting 45 k's an hour, uh, going down the back straight. And once again I'm on the outside of this corner, I'm quite happy with that, it's the smoothest way through, it's not the fastest way through. Uh, but it is the smoothest, and it means that you don't have to touch your brakes, you're not going to get dive-bombed, um, and you can come out of it smoothly without pedalling too much. Coming into the last straight, it's about 250 metres, 300 metres from here to the finish line, and the sprint opens up, and uh, I'm just doing what I have to do to stay in the wheels. Alistair comes up to try to get closer to the front, but gets boxed in. 
Um, and Milo gets across for another first place in the Prem, so another three points, which puts him into the lead in that category. So ultimately, after that Prem, there was a split, but Milo was on the right side of it, um, and that forced uh, Sion and Roket to chase, uh, which meant that we got to sit in. Um, having said that, it did slow down after that, um, and I've been drifting backwards a bit, just really from not paying attention. Um, and so I'm finding myself back here at about oh, 30th wheel, which is really not ideal. Um, however, the race always seems to slow down once you get to the top of the little rise um, after corner two. Um, and so I decide to take the inside line and see if I can make up some ground without doing too much extra work. Uh, so I'm following a wheel that seems to be moving vaguely forwards, uh, coming into the corner and taking a reasonably smooth line. Um, and I did have to do a little bit of a bit, a bit of a kick, uh, which I don't like doing. I'd much rather roll more smoothly through it, sort of 400, 450 watts rather than going up to 600. Um, but here I just came around the outside. It's into a downhill. The peloton's slowing down, and I've just made up well, the entire uh, sort of third or half of the peloton that's been ahead of me. Um, and then I'm just going to slot back in as soon as I can find a wheel to get back on. And like that, I'm back at the front, I'm on my lead-out guide's wheel, and he knows I'm there. So that worked pretty well. So we're about three laps from the end, and that means the flyers start going. And as soon as one goes, uh, there goes Milo on the right, pulling straight through and starting to chase it down. Uh, the guy from ADX in the green who's gone off the front, I don't know his name, he's really strong though, um, and he can hold a solo breakaway for three laps, uh, so we can't let him get any, any space. Milo's pulled a turn, he's got the chase started, a few other teams come through to help. Coffee Philosophy, USG, uh, Scion comes through, Darren uh, with the one leg for Scion. Uh, Rocket Racing's gone to the front as well, they've sent someone to keep the pace high. Um, and Milo's just drifted back and I'm going to slot into his wheel coming around this corner. Michael Davies uh, with the blue helmet and white sleeves in the rear view camera, he's sitting on my wheel. He's sitting third overall. He came fourth in the first crit and he came third at the road race yesterday. Um, he's actually dropped a bit of space there and had to chase a little bit to get back on. Um, at this point the field sort of spreads out and slows down a bit. Um, which of course means that it's a brilliant time to attack. Uh, past the two laps to go sign. Uh, everything's back together at this point um, and things now really start to string out. So coming through this top corner, two laps to go, sitting about seventh wheel. Um, I'm pretty happy with my position at the moment. Um, at this stage I don't think it's likely that anything's going to separate. Uh, the teams are too invested in getting their guy to the end. Um, I'm not too close to the front, but I can see the front. Um, and I'm happy just sitting in, rolling through for another lap. Still not having to do too much work. Um, I'm noticing that this Transitions Driveware guy is just losing the wheel a little bit here and there. Um, and I'm thinking that it might be a bit of an issue if I'm stuck behind him if he lets a gap go. So I'm starting to think about whether or not I should be passing him. Um, but we have got one lap to go. He does close that down, um, the, the little gap that's opened up, and Sam Jeffries is going back. He's on a good turn on the front. Um, although I'm not quite sure why. I'm not sure if they had a sprinter here after Phil crashed yesterday. Um, and at this point, um, Michael Davies from Rocket, uh, one lap to go, um, he's their sprinter. He comes up and jumps straight into their train. So they've now got three guys right up at the front. Um, Darren from Scion is there. Um, at this stage, I decide I want to get on the back of Rocket's train. Um, they are down to Edwin Bowden, uh, who won yesterday's road race, is just pulling off to the left. He did a really good turn, keeping it fast. 
Darren goes to the front, and I decide to slot in fourth wheel. Darren can go from sort of a kilometre out and pull six, seven hundred watts for that last couple of minutes, but he hasn't got much of a sprint, um, and so I'm quite happy sitting behind these two. Come into the last corner, fourth wheel. Uh, the guy on my wheel unfortunately hits or comes close to the curve and has to stop. Rocket launches. I launch around them, um, put my head down, and go as hard as I can all the way to the finish. Uh, open a bit of daylight behind me. And then surprisingly, uh, coming up in second is Tommy Baxter. Um, I haven't seen him just about all race, and he comes through with an enormous sprint to finish second. Uh, and I won't turn the sound up because uh, he was uh, not feeling too well <laughs> coming across the finish line. Um, and after he'd uh, shaken my hand, he pulled off and um, donated to the bushes. Uh, so the, yeah, there's the race. Um, it went pretty well for us. Our plan worked out about as well as you can. We had our guys either chasing down brakes or being in brakes or just keeping it nice and fast. Um, and then at the finish, I was able to slot in behind uh, the strongest train uh, and launch around them with 200 metres to go. Oh no. This one was definitely a team win. Huge shout out to Port Adelaide Cycling Club. Uh, I can't wait to see you all at the next one. Cheers, guys. Bye.